we are celebrating women's day today and this is a global platform global discussion to talk about the women's right and opportunity especially after pandemic we have started from sara and sara is a legal practitioner if i am not wrong so she is working as a mother as a professional and she is also understanding the how the things are changing in the community after pandemic so my passion came from my community and that is why i all i want for the community is to get better we hope that we are hoping that with time because for now we're not getting any support so it's majorly our own responsibilities our own resources and others but we hope that over time when people see what we do we we'll get support to see how we can support these people because majorly we are quite interested in helping these children but anything that surrounds the children whatever that surrounds these children is what we need to address if the mother doesn't have something doing something and uh, doing then we need to employ her so she can take care of the child pay school fees feeding clothing and other things since we started it we have been partnering with the ministry of human services and social development they have been of support to us the the challenges we've been having is one we just started and you know the support isn't the way it's supposed to be and uh, the government you know we are trying to see how we can be in the limelight because sometimes you do, you don't get people to see what is behind the and um, what is what is behind the scene it's like a particular part uh, a particular part is being favored than the other so you barely see women around here being supported most of them get support from the churches and most of them have to go through procedures you have to fill forms there are many times in which organizations or government officials have come to take data of women who don't work or women who don't have things to do and after a while it just goes silent you don't get to hear anything so majority of the time it has always been the that always been the effort of individuals around and for the fact that during the pandemic a lot of things have changed people are going through financial problem and crisis so people can no longer give that kind of support they give before now so it's quite a challenge that we have to go extra mile looking for money is looking for support looking for people to see how these people can be um these people can be uh helped sara uh, can you tell me that at the grassroots level that how the people are coping with this kind of situation and after this disaster after this crisis how they are trying to cope up the, this kind of challenge just like i said you know um in nigeria most of the persons who work work under the private organization and during the pandemic some of them had either half or no salary at all some were just given a portion and most men didn't have enough money to cater for their families and for the fact that some men refused to allow their wives work some women depend solely on the salaries of their husbands but during the pandemic because of the the uh, during the pandemic because of the hardship many of them started to look for things many of them decided to up into being economically empowered and with the support of their husbands for those who are married we some of them are already starting with those whom we've communicated with some of them are already thinking of stuff to do some of them are already uh enrolled into self empowerment programs like faith you are also uh, you are also from the legal background right faith. yes i'm just uh, asking miss faith faith you are also from the legal background law by background <laughs> Yeah so how do you see this scenario in Hello? your yeah can you hear us can you hear right yeah so i'll just take up because uh, sara you have given a lots of information from your country perspective so i'll just take uh, faith here and uh, because she is also from the law background and she understands uh, in a different context in her uh, in her country as well so i want to ask you to share her challenges her uh, experience being in a, a lawyer practitioner 
So Faith, can you just introduce yourself and then we can go ahead? Yes, happy International Women's Day to all the participants and the viewers. I'm Faith Namusana from Uganda, a legal officer for Okanyum Namsan and Company Advocates, a former legal officer for Lutheran World Federation. When it comes to our concern today, post pandemic effects vis-a-vis -vis the women, realizing women's rights, it is very important to note, it's very important to note when it comes to Ugandan con context, all the international laws have been est established regarding women's rights. We have specific, specific policies established by Ministry of Gender regarding the protection and response of women's rights. And we have a 1995 constitution also well stipulates our laws. One of the laws that women have in Uganda, a right to access to health services, a right to education, a right to legal representation, a right to, prop to own properties, a right to access to health services, that is sec sexual and reproductive health services. But if, when we look at the effects of COVID-19, women have suffered in Uganda and in Africa at large. One of the major problems that we have faced here in Uganda is increased SDBV cases, which includes the rape, defilement, physical assault, and domestic violence. One time in my own country, at a place called Soroti, there has been a report which was shared during this post epidemic effects, 500 girls got pregnant. And this has been a challenge because many women and girls are not able to access education. Secondly, we have a high rate of poverty in Uganda. Women are not able to afford basic food, like in basic services like food, employment, which has led to increased maternal death rate. When we look at the World Health Organization report, it is stated that 94% of the death rates globally, it, they, it is us Africans which are having a low income that has been, that has costing the percentage of them, the death rate. Thirdly, when we look at Uganda, many people have lost properties because they are having debts due to post-epidemic effects. So many women have lost properties. They cannot be able to bail out their cases because they don't have legal representation. When we look at um, health issues, many women cannot be able to access health services because they don't have money they don't have jobs, they don't have income generating activities. So personally, as a lawyer, I'm looking out to durable solutions for the country. And I cannot perform this alone as a, an individual. I'm calling out stakeholders like United Nations, World Health Organization, partners like media group, TVs, stations, associations of media and in national organizations to help us address issues which are affecting women, which maybe possibly they can increase fundings, targeting women, increase awareness on TV stations, awareness raising on platforms so that all the women's rights can be stated in, 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 in a, a much a much perspective way, whereby all of us have access to services and we have access to service delivery with our government. Does that mean Uganda government assisting the woman and helping the community directly? 
when, when we look at Uganda, not all our cases are addressed. We are still having gaps and challenges as women. No, the government is not able to treat all women. When we look at um, reproductive health, not all the women are able to access these services. When it, when it comes to gender issues, still women, many women are employed. Okay. Is it difficult for the women in Uganda to initiate uh, to start or initiate any kind of uh, uh, humanitarian uh, work on to assist each other, to assist the, yes. the other poor families, to assist other women, or to empower them to start uh, any kind of business uh, to help their their kids or their family at least for food to afford the 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 day the the, the day expenses. Any groups of women can do this, or the community is the man is the man is the man society in Uganda, is the male society. I beg your pardon, the network is not clear. I'm not able to understand. Sorry. No, sorry, sister. I said, is is the woman in Uganda can start or initiate any kind of. Uh, 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 groups to help each other, to empower each other, to start their own business, uh, at least to, to assist the family and the kids uh, for the food, for the livelihood uh, expenses or for the life food, uh, to, for the lively livelihood uh, at food or something during the pandemic, during the lockdown, or is still the community in Uganda is for the man, the man who can do everything and women just waiting him to to, to help and to do all the all the activities for the families. Uh, I believe in my own opinion, I, I, I have, uh, I believe that everybody has a responsibility in promoting and protecting human rights, starting from the government, the community, international NGOs, local level of a company, I know many companies are employing many men vis-a-vis -vis women. When it comes to governments, we, we are denied services. They prioritize a category of gender. That is men, when it comes to access to services, women are marginalized. They are left out in programs like development. Women are not involved. Women don't like stop, especially in rural areas. Those women are left out. They are not sharing their own views, and yet they have durable solutions to their own problems. At a household level, women are playing a key role because in, in my community where I grew up, women are almost paying all bills. When it comes to garden work, it is women who are working. When it comes to feeding children, it is a woman's responsibility. Even food, it is women who are providing. That is in Tesla region. But this is not, it's not uh, just this year, you know. You see, like, women responsible for the feeding the kids, take care of the family. And in the same time, women cannot do anything by themselves unless the man approve this, unless the man give them a permission to do something. Is it not... Uh, something horrible or not uh, easy for the woman. What do you think? And also- It is Ugandan... actually difficult for women. Yeah, it's, so difficult. it's so difficult for Ugandan women, you know, to- Yeah, actually it's very difficult for Ugandan women. But in my own view, I think women should be empowered through maybe providing projects that are targeting women through income generating activities like vocational skilling, entrepreneurship pro projects, and giving them sustainable approach to their solution because we, we address solutions specifically on the individual, so a group of persons, and different people need a different approach. There are women who are having degrees and they are unemployed. Such people need to be engaged in establishing their own companies, establishing their own NGOs, but uh, 
in Ugandan context, women don't have money. They need to be supported to have money to start up their own entrepreneurship programs. A rural woman in a community needs to be supported with IGA or possibly farming, farming seeds so that they'll be able to dig and sustain their own families. And then we have a group of women which are actually girls. They need to be supported in education and increased access to health services so that they will be able to not just increase access to health services, but free access to health services so that all women will be able to access their health and their rights in general. It, uh, you have highlighted many points just i as a lawyer and uh, i can see that you know you have uh, lots of other perspective but uh, i want to uh, uh, hear from a journalist who is from uh, justina justina uh, you are listening that uh, the different perspective of different countries so how do you see as a journalist how do you see what are the challenges for the government to those who are not able to uh, uh, support their own countrymen and what are the bottlenecks for individual that living in the society. So as a journalist point of view, I just want to hear from you that how do you see these kind of challenges can be overcome, how long it will take to meet those kind of solutions that what we are struggling for. Okay, yes. Um, in Nigeria, most times the governments are not aware of what's happening and they need like those of us in the media to tell them what is really happening. Because most times they just give to them, to them, they give um, palliative, they give stimul uh, they have stimulus that they've ordered for. But yet a lot of women, these are only accessed, most of these loans, these palliative are being accessed by men and not by women. But for the government to know that those things are not getting to the women, that is why most of us in the media, we reach out to these people and highlight and tell the government this is what they are facing. They've not assessed this. So they can know how to adjust their programs to fit in to these people. Like during the, during the COVID-19 period, there were a lot of, according to the government, there were a lot of money that they shared for food, for they gave loans to businesses. But going around as a journalist to assess who and who got it, I realized that about 80% of women did not assess this. And it was just so disheartening that the government is saying they've done this and done this just to help alleviate the suffering of COVID-19. But yet, these things are not getting to who they are supposed to get to. So as journalists, we try to bring out reports informing the government what is really going on. Because yes, they are in their high places, they just give out orders and they don't know how these orders are uh, being carried out. So they need to be informed that whatever they've done is not really reaching out to the people. And that is what the media has been trying to do. In another aspect, a lot of, a lot of these goods are being diverted. Like I, I realized all the time I, I wrote a report, there was some palliative that was, that was distributed during the uh, pandemic, during the lockdown, and it found itself in the market. And we realized it and raised alarm. And it had to be mopped up back from the market to be distributed to those who are supposed to, who are supposed to get it. So I think the media still have a lot of things to do. We still need to live up to our responsibility because a lot of people are still not focusing on the fact that these people are not getting these, um, these palliative measures, which would help them come out and help them come out from the poverty, help, help them cope with the effects of the pandemic. Because the pandemic has dealt a lot on the women, especially, both being sexually abused, both being marginalized, a lot of them lost their jobs. A lot of them were not paid. They were not. They didn't lose their job, but they were not paid for months. I see a lot of them just like get, start getting paid. I think around November, December last year. And yes, a lot of the government didn't, were not aware of all this. Or even if they were aware, they, they pretended as if they were not aware. So it was our duty to make this, make them realize this. 
and they don't understand the challenges right but what are the percentage that you see that you know the participation of the uh, women especially in the media and the uh, uh, percentage of news coverage about the women into the media how do you see and how you see that it can be changed or no or is it the only the final that it is can it cannot be changed in nigeria i think we are still we still lack lots of um, news sources as women because they, there are lots of there is lack of women voices in the news a lot of the problems a lot of women are facing are not there and it is not really the fault of these women because a lot of them have been told you are not to speak your husband is to speak for you you are not to say anything whatever you have to say you tell it to your husband to speak for you so most times even when the media go to meet those women they are not ready to speak they they instead they direct you to their husband so there have been lack of uh, female voices as sources and that is why a lot of their problems are not being aired in that in in the percentage you can say about just 25% of in, of news coverage covers the women which is really on equal is the the inequality is the gap is very large and needs to be bridged but how can we bridge this when the society especially in the north in the northern part of the country you can't even visit a woman at home without the permission of her husband there are some places that you can't enter into the house if the husband is not around so there are a lot of cultural a lot of religious a lot of a lot of um restrictions that affect the voices of the women in the media but as journalists we are still trying our best to change the narrative but if it take long for this narrative to be changed because until when the women accept that they need to speak up and their voices need to be heard before we can really get a change on women as sources in the media that even we see in uh, different part of the world also that how the media representation among the women are there and that is the uh, that's the reason that we don't hear much voice uh, there so but uh, i'll just take one uh, reaction from mathabo from lesotho and she ha- she is a professional young professional in the working as a uh, job professional so i just want to hear being a youth who is into job and as an employee how do you see these challenges are you are these scenario affecting you or something creating insecurity about your job so do you see the same change and same difficulties in your country a woman are mostly uh, challenged with a uh, role that are meant for decision making you may find that if there's a, a position advertised that it's a uh, involves higher decision making or put most opportunities are given to men so those are some of the challenges we face here and in our political space is the same thing the politicians here thinks that most of the roles are meant for men and women are only to follow not to lead in such a uh, political roles but generally i would say hello yeah we can hear you yeah oh okay thank you <laughs> as far as malo now but generally i can say women here are strong I, i i want to believe that women here are strong they can stand up to their own they have the right to own property it's just that uh, opportunities are not opened to them or they're not at their disposal that's the challenge we're having here and uh, most of our government policies are not in favor of women so um, i think that's a project that's underway to make aware of those at higher levels to uh, include women in their decision making okay. yeah so, so 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 you see in the jobs uh, where you do the job you also see the same uh, means ignorance about taking the women as a job pro- that professional in your company or in the in the sector where you are working the same issue is also there in your country yes the same issues are there okay women are not given equal opportunities here 
they are most of the time disregarded. Okay, Mathabu, that uh, I understood the problem. As a policy expert from the Nigeria, Ms. Lillian, that uh, you joined a little bit late, but I, you can understand better that how the scenario in the world changing. And you can see the, the uh, same issue, same, same thing as a legal expert has been expressing, even the journalists, they are expressing the same issue across the globe. How do you see as a policy expert? Because you are dealing with the policy and the different kind of uh, advice and advocacy. So how do you see how, what are the solution? Is there any road ahead or we are just going to give it up? Oh, no, no, we, there's no need to, to give it up. But the, the gap between women and men, boys and girls should be narrowed, maybe through training. Matabu, I just was addressing to Lelian that she is okay. a policy expert and she, uh, she, I want to that as a policy expert, how do you, how do you, how does she uh, see that is there any hope in future uh, for this kind of crisis to overcome or we have to give it up? Miss Lillian. I can, please, please unmute. I, yeah. I think Lilian. I think the connection not that good with Lilian. Yeah, we uh, will. We can come back to you later. If there is any problem, you can come yeah. back to you later. Yeah, we can back to later. I want to hear from you about the pandemic. Last time, we hear the pandemic. COVID sorry. COVID this kingdom. We want to hear about the, the pandemic. How was in Lesotho? Matabo. I don't think you can hear me. Yeah, you said the last part. I didn't get the last part quite well. Yeah, Matabu, I said last time, the last time I hear the boss during the pandemic, still Losoto was saved. Is the COVID-19 visit in Losoto? Is registered any cases in Losoto? Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> Yes, we have, but fortunately for now, the cases are, are lowering. The deaths that are recorded currently are lowering. We experienced a bad number during the December holidays. I think that's when uh, most of uh, the, the Basutu living in South, South Africa were coming into the country. That's when we experienced the higher number of deaths and um, people that suffered from the pandemic. Yeah, but so currently the number is, is lowering. Yeah, we thank God. Because in the yeah. middle of, of the crisis, I hear Los Soto is still was saved from this uh, pandemic. This is why I'm asking you this question. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Currently, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Matabo. Uh, I, we have here one girl child right activist, Deborah from Nigeria. And uh, she has been here hearing the lots of challenges about the women and all. And she has been working for the girl's child rights. And it's like amazing because we, have, we cannot ignore the girl child when we are talking about the women's day and the women's rights and opportunities. How do you see Deborah? How do you see that the, about the rights about the girl child in your country, especially uh, when they are vulnerable, they are, you know, very easy to be affected uh, due to this kind of crisis. How, what is your say? So, hello, everyone. I'm Deborah from Nigeria. So, um, like you rightly said, we can't uh, just celebrate uh, Women's Day without um, talking about the girl child because um, uh, girls, you grow up to be women someday. So um, if their rights are not protected, if we don't look out for them, they might not have the opportunity to even grow up to, to be able to celebrate um, Women's Day. And so um, and 
the girl child has not been left out uh, in the struggles uh, during this pandemic. We saw an increase in rape cases in Nigeria, increase in rape cases uh, during this uh, pandemic. And um, um, some girls, girls are out of school. Girls are, some girls are, most girls are currently out of school. And also we have a recent case where we've been having cases of abduction from school, where girls have been adopted, abducted from schools, kidnapped from schools, especially in the, uh, in the northern part of the country. So um, the girl child is, is faced with a lot of challenges and uh, this pandemic has even made the more, uh, has, made, has made her more vulnerable. Uh, women out of jobs, uh, people being out of jobs and all of that, uh, uh, the poverty level uh, has increased and that uh, inadvertently affects um, the girl child. So I think the, the most prominent issue we are having right now is this cases of uh, kidnapping because girls are most vulnerable to it. And we've had uh, cases of like 200 school girls being abducted. Uh, some of them have been uh, returned where the government, the federal government paid some ransom and had them returned and all. But then it's, it's, it's becoming a thing of concern because um, and I think parents are now scared to even send their girls to school, to send their kids to school because uh, uh, they are afraid. Yeah, everyone is scared. No one wants uh, their child um, to be abducted um, while in school. So. Those are some of the cases, uh, some of the issues that are currently like, affecting the girl child um, in the society at the moment in Nigeria. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, David, can, you, can, you, can you share some of the cases that especially you handled uh, about the girl child abduction and the, uh, the family perspective that how they go through that, especially in the, during the pandemic. If there is any that to share, I'm sorry, you'd have to come again. The line was breaking a bit. Yeah, so. I think that uh, can you share some of the stories that you have handled during the pandemic when this kind of issue happened and you handled those cases personally? And what were the reaction from the parent side? That Diana, what are the what were the supports from the government? Are are these the, the these issue the priorities of government or they are just taking it just for the sake of doing duty? Okay, um, so personally, um, I was able to intervene in the case of rape, uh, where a girl was um, where a girl was raped, and um, uh, the report was brought to me uh, because I work in that um, field, and we tried um, to help girl but um she was scared because the person abusing her was um uh had had father okay so because we are still in the process of the case i might not be able to divulge the full information but um that's like one of the uh, kind of issues we face here the person that was abusing her was her father and it has been going on for a long time it has been going on for a long time and uh, she only just was able to speak up because she uh, got gained admission uh, into the university and finally left the home, left her home. So it was when she left her home that she opened up to her roommates in school who happened to be the sister to one of the people who was in my organizations. And that was how I got um, involved in the case. So, uh, We've been working with the girl. We are not done with the case because um, the girl has been so scared to come forward. The girl has been so scared. She has opened up to us, but then having to, um, she has not given us to go ahead to take up the case because um, she's so scared. And um, also, her mom is also a victim of domestic act and violence from the same from the from her father. Okay, and that uh, brings brings me to what. Uh, Sarah talked about here in Nigeria, where the fact that some women do not earn really where it's a problem. Women not earning poverty is, is, is a problem, is, is a factor that encourages um, abuse and domestic violence. So the woman, the mother, 
in this case uh, has no job she's not earning so she's in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a home where she's been abused and she can't see because she's wondering um she's scared she doesn't know how she's going to survive um if she leaves because she can't um uh, she does not work and then the daughter right now is being abused and she can't even open up to the mother because her mother basically can't even save herself so so it's a really tough situation but um we're working on it we're um trying to get the girl to um you know open up and because we can't we need her we need her to proceed with the case we need her to proceed with the case which is not uh if she doesn't agree with us and says, okay, I'm ready to do this, and we go ahead, she might not come forward. So what exactly are you pushing for? So we're still trying to talk to the girls. Uh, we're still trying to uh, reach out to some other organizations, collaborate with some other organizations to see how uh, we'll be able to um, handle that case. And especially also, um, um, also reach out to the mother because the case is not just about the girl right now. Um, um, it's also... It's also about the mother. And also, apart from um, issues of uh, uh, abuse, uh, during this uh, post-pandemic and during the pandemic, I was able to work with uh, uh, an organization called She From Africa, where we, we, we provided um, sense girls that were out of school because of poverty, because of uh, uh, their economic situation. We were able to send them back to school uh, so they can they can go back to school. We, we collaborated with the Embassy of Finland in Nigeria, and uh, we found a school somewhere here in the capital, and uh, we sent about 25 girls back to school, and we had their tuition paid from uh, JSS one, that's like the junior level down to the secondary school to cover for their entire um, uh, secondary school education. So um, you asked if what the government is doing. Uh, as regards um, these cases, the girl child and all of that. Um, I, I don't think they're doing their best because we have, we have laws, we have laws that are, that constitutions and laws that speak against, that says uh, uh, rapists, uh, sexual uh, offenders will be punished. And, but most times you see them go scot free. And also our, um, our system is fashioned in a way, or it's not fashioned in a way, maybe the corruption and all, all, all that you have there. When you try to uh, pick up a sexual abuse case uh, to the police and all of that, it's usually not easy. They make it difficult. Some parents are even asked to pay money. Like, you know, my daughter is raped. My daughter just got raped and I'm trying to get justice for her and they are telling me to pay some amount of money and then sometimes don't treat it as um as if it's it's something important they treat rape as it's common like it's not a big deal and all of that so i think that's the part where our government is not um doing so well i, I think we we I, I think i would love to see our government get more involved uh uh talk about this more uh inform enlighten the people more because we are also dealing with with the, orient or the orientation we also have here, it's not, it's not so good. Where you see women, we see uh, during the pandemic and post-pandemic, post-COVID, we, we saw a lot of women being groups in the markets, groups in the markets and we have uh, sales boys and all of that and harass women, sexually harass women in open spaces. And nobody says anything about this. Nobody says anything. It's, it's, it, we normalize it, we make it look like um, it's normal. Uh, you know, people get raped and common line and people are making comments trying to trivialize it trying to make rips thing look like it's not a big deal so i, I feel like we're not we're not people are not enlightened you know people need to be educated on what sexual harassment is about the, the, the issue of consent because the men here some some most of the men here they don't even understand the concept of consent and and that is it's very very important if you're going to solve issues like sexual abuse sexual harassment, even in the workplace and at home and anywhere, everywhere, we have to talk about, men have to understand the concept of consent. They have to understand this clearly. Because if they don't understand what we're talking, if they feel that um, 
if they don't know what consent is about, they won't even know when they are crossing the line. So I feel like uh, men need to be educated more. Our mentality, mindset is, is a big problem here. We, we raise our boys, boys are being raised to feel uh, entitled to, to women's body. They are being raised to, to feel that uh, the women or women are created to satisfy them. And that, you know, they are being raised to see women as uh, maybe sexual objects. Maybe directly and indirectly, social conditioning, the way the way we project women, the things we even teach our girls, you know, we encourage men from childhood, we teach boys to dream, to aspire, to make money, to, to be the best in their field and all of that. But from day one, we are like trying to remind the girl or teach the girl that uh, all you are and all you'd ever be is just linked to a man. You know, we groom the girl for for the man. Oh, don't do this. What are you going to do? Don't you know you're going to go to your husband's house? Don't do this. You don't know you're going to end up in a man's house. Don't do this. That is all a girl hears all her life. And then this girl grows up and she feels like a man is all, a man is my, is the ultimate thing for me. So if she finds herself in, a, in an abusive situation, she can't even leave because she feels like, this is this is all. This is all. This is all of it for me. Like this is all that is there to me and all. Whereas on the other hand, men feel like they are free. They have it all. You know. So that mindset, I I I, I wish to see our government get more involved in ensuring that um that mindset um is eradicated and um and all of that. I'm putting measures in place to make sure that uh the girl child is, uh, is more protected, is, is protected and uh, safe. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Uh, Deborah. It, it is like very sad to hear about this kind of uh, things, especially from the society uh, to society's end. So, uh, you know, uh, here it plays, the media also plays a very great role, you know, to building the image, building the, bringing the priority for the government, putting the pressure on the government. So media also plays a very good role. So here I'll take uh, Musa Hawa that uh, you uh, are as a freelance reporter, you know, how do you see, do, do you cover these kind of issues more often or your uh, media organization tells that no, it is not required, this kind of a story we don't want uh, to play or to, uh, to cover. So what is the issue? Because media has a very important role in bringing the issues on the forefront. So how do you see? Okay. Um... Good evening, everyone. Um, happy Women's Day. I remain Hawal Haji Musa uh, from the northern part of uh, Nigeria. Um, of course, as a freelance writer, uh, we a reporter, we had a lot of game. The, the main issue or the problem people are facing is uh, even we, the advocate that uh, human, or should I say women's, uh, women's right advocates that we are aiming at uh, letting the women know their rights. We find it difficult because those victims don't really have the courage. They don't have the, the courage to come out and voice out their, their problems. Even though they have their relatives or most, uh, mostly their first family, their close relatives who stop them from doing it. Like the mentality is like, do you, do you want to ruin your life or the name of, uh, don't you consider the reputation of the family name? You understand? So you have a lot of, and such issues traumatize the victims. It, it, it kills them silently before you know it. We, we had cases of, of suicide because number one, even if the girl or the lady want to, 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 to voice out she need help, her family will stop her from doing such. You understand? So hardly a lot of cases like this have been happening, uh, but the issue is they don't voice out. You wouldn't know, you will not know that they are happening because they don't come out to see it. It is just feel that, uh, that you happen to come across that you, 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 you hear that's, those that, are, that you know. There are some that even the father will, will, will like, will be involved in, it will be the perpetrator and then the wife, his wife, that's the mother of the children will support him that they can't let people hear about this. 
you understand so uh um concisely let me like recap we are we are underrating the 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 the, the sentence or the, the tagline here women's right so i think it is it will be better if i recapitulate uh, uh the concept that concept of uh, women's right that even made us to to converge here in this platform to discuss about it and that even made uh, 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 the international bodies to declare today as International Women's Day. That is, when we talk about women's rights, we are, we are generally talking about human rights in general. It is not just women's rights, it is human rights in general. When we talk about that, uh, that is we are all entitled to, to, to human rights, of course, both uh, genders, then this includes the right to live free from, uh, from, from violence, and discrimination to enjoy the highest uh, distant attainable standard of, of physical and mental health. I earlier stated issues that will tra traumatize the victims of maybe uh, gender violence and other stuff, you understand? So everyone have uh, like a, a woman should have a, a highest attainable standard of physical and mental health to be educated. That is the most important thing, education because if uh, like it is known it is a popular saying uh, in my locality or to the people of knowledge that educating a female child is like educating the whole nation you educate a female child is like you educate the whole nation now let me bring this into light the more now you educate a female child a female child is meant or uh, and believed to to raise children to give birth to children to to raise them so you educate a, a female child, she will educate her children. And the children will come up with great knowledge from their mother. And then they will become better people in the society, not just in the society, in their families, from their families to, 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 the, to, the, to the society and before you know it to the whole world. Now, assuming the female child is not well educated and doesn't know the difference between right and wrong is illiterate, how do you think such person can, can raise, raise reasonable and responsible children that will one day become the uh, prosperous or the great leaders of a nation. Now, apart from educating the female child, now it is also her right to own property, which of course other presenters have talked about, her right to vote and to be voted for. And then it is also her right to earn equal wage. It is not, uh, it is, most especially in my country, it is believed that the male, the male, uh, the male child, or uh, the men have more priority that are, they, are, they are considered to be responsible of taking care of, uh, of, of the household. So they decide to, to cut off their wages and other stuff. So no, it shouldn't be like that. Just as I've earlier stated, women's rights are generally the human rights. So they should have equal wages. Now, relating it, the international bodies have, uh, have uh, there are articles that's declaration of the elimination of violence against women, outlined several forms of violence against women. So it is uh, in article two, there are a lot of subsections there, but I would not like to go into that. Now, when we, so COVID-19 pandemic now, COVID-19 pandemic is not, a health issue. It is not just a health issue. It is a profound shock to our societies, to the whole world, to everywhere. An economy. Most uh, most of the economy of most nations have been altered, if not all. And women are at the heart of care and response. Efforts on the way. Now, as frontline responders, health professionals community volunteers, transport and logistics managers, scientists, and more, women are making critical contributions to address the outbreak every day. Now, additionally, they are at increased risk of infectious and loss of livelihood and existing trends point. Now, what are the ways out? Looking into the topic of discussion, post-pandemic, realizing women's rights. Women have, not just women, 
everyone, it is clear to everyone now that uh, if not for the pandemic, most of women will not know their rights and wouldn't have experienced some of the things they experience. Most importantly, the, 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 the violence, the gender violence. So uh, in a way to cop these, I, I like, I stated out some points here. The main point here should be, oh, one of the key important things to look into is educate the, the girl child. Let her know her rights. Let her be, be, be educated in all dimensions. Let her know who she is. Let her know who a male child is. Let her know everything about, let her know everything. Just educate her, let her be learned. Uh, I, 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 can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, Are we you can with hear me? you. We can okay. hear you. So the next uh, thing we should look into post, that is the post-pandemic realizing women's rights is uh, government and not just government. We, we are fond of uh, relating every issue, every matter to the government. Every little thing that happened will say the government, yeah, we, we agree to that. Of course, we voted them. We are looking up to them to satisfy our needs. And of course, we trust that they will do, do that for us. Yes, but still, every change, every, every, every step of progress or every step of development should start from you yourself. You shouldn't always wait for the government the government have a lot of sectors, have a lot of things to focus on. Then you can start off by uh, by by doing something from your from your own end. As a patriotic citizen of my nation and good representative of my locality, I can decide to oh, mostly me and my friends, my friends and I usually this have this such discussions. We we'll think of organizing a program uh, where we involve uh, young ladies, women, educate them about some things, the importance of learning, the importance of acquiring education, the importance of self-empowerment, entrepreneurship, and other stuff. So I will also include the government here, yeah, quite all right. The at their own end, they uh, uh, thought to have created a lot of platforms or programs to engage women. I will also emphasize more on it that it is not just the state, uh, the government, but it is a sound warning to or sound uh, attention drawer to all stakeholders and the government, not just two of them, but even the communities to, to create programs or platforms where women will come together. And you, you even if you don't give them anything, you give them a piece of advice, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship uh, tips, how do you go about being self-reliant? It's, it, it's something. Impacting knowledge in, in people alone without even, even if you don't have the capacity of giving them financial support, educating them is something. So creating programs, either you support them financially or educationally, any kind of uh, program or platform should be created for that. Now, also to the family members, you uh, the family members in this uh, aspect should also be supportive to to their to to their members most especially the elderly ones they shouldn't discriminate between male and female child they they, they should be fully supportive whenever a, a a lady or female child bring about something of development they should not bring her down and make her feel she's inferior you understand let her feel she's, she's also equal to every other person in, in, in the family, support her. She bring about idea of, okay, she want to be a mechanic. She want to start repairing. She want to go and learn how to repair car. She want to go and learn how to go and learn farming. You understand? So families should be supportive. 
the pandemic has taught us a lot of things. We yeah. have been staying indoor, no supply, no financial assistance. The financial, the, uh, the, the, uh, the assistance said to have been provided by the government have been, have been hijacked by oh, wow. some of the government officials. You understand? I'm listening. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sir, you, you highlighted about the training and the skilling as well as the support from the family. We have yes. one uh, trainer here, the Ibtisam Khamis. She has been training the women and skilling the women. Uh, she has been listening very you know, carefully about your words that how to train, how to support the family. I want to hear, how, how do you agree? You know, the, all the points that Ms. Musa has put here, that to train, educate, inform, support, lots of things for the girl, child and the women. How do you do that? Do you do the same thing to nurture? And what's wrong there that people are not turning up in that way, even after lots of training? Unmute, unmute, Tisham. We cannot hear you. No. Hello. Not yeah, we can hear you now. You listening for me? Yeah, we listen to you. We can hear you well. Okay. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, Good morning. I think that is uh, maybe you can uh, agree some things about this according to different between uh, many things. You know? We can hear you, Pisam. Hello? We can hear you. We hear you well. Yeah, please, please go ahead. We can hear you. I think we lost her. Maybe someone can speak up before she gets it stable. Okay, yeah. Uh, if this time we can hear you, continue. Or let us go back to Hawa and come back to you after you fix your problem. Yeah, so we have, you know, that uh, we, we yeah. have uh, one What's of the pol policy experts. Hello? I'm listening. Yeah, uh, we have we have uh, one policy expert. We have been hearing lots of problems from the government ignorance, lots of problem about the politic politicians and the many in the community stakeholders. So where are we going wrong as a policy expert? How do you see, Miss Lillian, that how do you see that where the things are going wrong? So can you just highlight on those points as a policy expert? Please unmute Miss Lillian. Lillian. I don't think she is here. <clears throat> okay, yeah, Sister Hawab. You yes, I, can. I, I, I understood what you what you mentioned before, and I hear your advice well. And you focus on uh, education. Uh, and you, your advice is if you educate a young girl, you can guarantee a good future for the kids and also for the family. And all, all you mentioned is advice and you're making a good plan and how, you, how we can solve the problem in Nigeria. But I want to ask you, if the woman in Nigeria have a step forward to solve this problem, not the discussion, your discussion with, beside your discussion with your friends, if there is any step, actual step, and you break this uh, problem down to solve it, to solve the women problems in Nigeria, or just just still you, you you just still in the stage of talking and cover the problem. Okay. Okay, are you with me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Now it is um, actually. Can okay. someone unmute mute his? I can't. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. It is not just about uh, verbal expression, about training the women, educating them, and other stuff. It is something that a lot of 
advocates have done. We have the likes of Aisha Lemu, that is in the northern part of Nigeria. We have the, the likes of uh, the likes of uh, Mariam Booker, the likes of Hadiza Gabon. We have uh, the likes of uh, uh, a lot of them. A number of them are there on their own. The 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 uh, there is uh, this uh, this Dr. Zayas, the uh, the wives of the northern gov uh, governors. They are they are, they are doing a lot of things to 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 support to empower women to let them know, and the women are willing because uh, compared to previous years. You, you hardly you see there is this Munira. Let me uh, cut off from here. There is one Munira, Munira Suleiman Tanimu. She's vibrant. She, in fact, she contested for I think the seat of uh, senator. She's a northern lady who has been believed to be weak, and uh, but she 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 proved them wrong. She put them wrong. So she's one of those uh, women that, that initiate programs to involve women. So it is not just from my own end. I know a lot, quite a number of uh, women that are not just women and even some men that are looking forward and that, 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 that are struggling to, to get women involved. You understand? So it is not a verbal expression. It is something that I know it is going and we have been all... Oh, uh, this a victim of pandemic, either by the disease or by the the causes, the effect of the pandemic. We've been at home. Most people will feel like, ha, for, for, for how long will I stay home without moving about? For how long will I go and continue with my business? So we know the effect. So no one will be willing to stay back at home. The women realize that uh, despite the fact they are, they are the homemakers, they still have a long way to go. They still have to, to be educated. They still have uh, to, to, to go out also and, and be supportive to the family. There are, you can't just always be waiting for your husband, for his spouse to like, I need, I need, I need money for pad. I need money for, for, for seasoning. I need money for this. The pandemic has taught us a lot of lessons. You can't always be the, give, the, 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 the asking, the, the receiver. You understand. You also need to 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 wake up. The pandemic has taught us to 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 wake up and be self empowered, so that you support your own family, and then the families of of relatives and maybe your parents and siblings at home. So I yeah. think uh, the main thing here is women themselves should know that they are meant to to be strong enough and to 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 rise up again and. To, yeah. to, to shine bright, you understand? Yeah, you train the women to understand uh, their rights and their role in the community toward their families, and also how they can take care of the family and how can they lift up their life uh, to, train, to train them to know their, uh, uh, how, can, how can they defend themselves and avoid the violence against them. And also we come back to it. Can you check for me? Yes, yes. Now, uh, I think the Miss Lillian uh, has uh, had some problem with the sound. Now she is ready to answer. We can try it. Yeah, I, I, think, I, th I think she has a problem. Yeah, yeah, we connected to some with uh, what how I mentioned about training the girls, the young girls in yeah. Nigeria, uh, to know their rights and how they can help their family for sustainable life. If you some, you can repeat the question for Hadi Shahid. Yes, uh, actually, I think uh, you are on mute. So some unmute the the unmute some unmute. We cannot hear you. Unmute it, Sam. We cannot hear you. It's Sam. Unmute. We cannot hear you. Unmute. Oh, there is a problem, I think. Yeah. Hello. Sam, Hello. We can hear you. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. What so, do you say? Uh, 
yeah so uh, actually uh, how do you see like training a women yeah. can you hear yeah okay i'm here for you yeah so you you can have your opinion how do you see that how, what do you see that uh, this uh, the solution that how we can find out the solution in this scenario uh, after pandemic not only after pandemic but also in a general way that how the women are being treated in the society not in one country across the world and, and this is the thing that you you also face sometimes so what are the solution you see as a trainer as a leader how do you see that how we can overcome this okay thank you mr shahid uh i think that there are um, many differences about this pandemic for uh human rights for women such as uh, to how to can be improvement for uh, local products you know and how you can assessment for regions according to the to the environment to social economic to have it and what can you do maybe after before pandemic women can see the vision it is very narrow you know after that you can how to to create it and how to innovation in this period I see that to to see to see for uh, to focus on rural area. About seventy uh, percent depend and to increase income for the national country. All of them for uh, make uh, daily making for uh, closing. Uh, pandemic to see the how to work you know the majority of women to going for um, daily marketing for uh, to buying or uh, both for local product i i mentioned that for uh, the so that for religion the woman is very suffering for the pandemic and the government cannot be able to be what happened you know i think that in my message or my vision after the future i hope to applicable any treatment can be a clip a clip a a clickable you know and to share together about uh, some um, situation together you can main of one objective okay so, such as uh, minister of uh, animal resource and agriculture and um, minister of products all of this to share together and how adapt for this um, challenge you know you should be to focus yeah, on to, to focus on <laughs> rural area exactly just i hope to understand yeah, we, uh, okay so yeah we get uh, you 
we get your point and don't forget uh, all of us uh, our words can change uh, the whole world uh, because we all uh, are together and now we can go to Iman Abu Damir to see her opinion in our topic Iman welcome Iman hi everyone hi um, I am glad that uh, we are all here all around, you know, because one hand is not clapping, as she said before. Uh, I greet my previous colleague that uh, their uh, unique speech and the notice and the observation they give us, because uh, everyone is uh, a specialist in his country and what is uh, needed. Uh, but now we are so elated, you know. Uh, in my country, Sudan, uh, I think uh, most of the markets uh, uh, in the form informal sector of Sudan were for women. And uh, when lockdown happened, uh, a lot of women uh, been out on the street. I want to connect everything with you that everything is connected. There is nothing is isolated. Everything is connected. So when I can uh, say uh, epidemic revealed what happened, uh, and the connection between gender and economic and uh, gender, economic and um, uh, politics as well uh, as violence or uh, women's rights. You know, in Sudan sectors, as I said before, most of the women uh, are uh, in form the informal sector. And after the epidemic and lockdown, women have been in for street in, with their, uh, you know, uh, families and everything. The critical, uh, economical, uh, everything trouble, you know, Sudan in a transitional period between uh, dictatorship and now we have uh, a civilian uh, uh, transitional government. But this is, did, did not prevent us from being, uh, uh, everything went high and expensive. And most of uh, poor people been under line of poverty as well uh, uh, people uh, uh, in the middle class been poor, you know, because uh, now we are facing uh, economical crisis in Sudan and we are hardly trying to cope on. Um, the epidemic didn't ease anything. So the connection between the uh, epidemic and the health situation with the gender uh, resulted to violence. A lot of, uh, a lot of you know, cases went high for violent, uh, demonistic violence in Sudan during that uh, uh, period. Even the violence uh, cross the line to go to the women uh, in the front line, doctors and nurses. Uh, even the, the, you know, the Ministry uh, of Health um, pushed to have uh, a law to prevent doctors from being, uh, you know, violating or uh, having violence for them. Uh, as well, I want to tell you that uh, a civil political economical in Sudan, uh, the transitional period did not sign any, any uh, of the agreements we have to support women's situation in Sudan. Not CEDAW, not uh, Moboto, neither uh, 1325. And now women in uh, um, Conflict area are suffering from uh, systematic rape. They are su uh, suffering from uh, violent beating. They are suffering from kidnapping to work as a servant for the other parties. As well, we should not forget that Sudan signed uh, months ago, months ago, um, uh, for the Juba agreement, peace agreement, and that happened as a political peace, but, but not um, get down to the women on the ground. Uh, actually, uh, the painful thing that uh, Sudan depends on a rainy season for agriculture, which women on that area um, 
going out of the camp to their real uh, lands and trying with their men to you know cultivate the area the, the land and everything but unfortunately uh, they've been raped killed and uh, beaten my thing this is a situation here and this is a problem but as a civil society activist i should look for the solution and push for the recommendation to happen on the ground this is why i uh, divided my, conver my my recommendation after the epidemic to three chapters government civil society and social media if we try to work together uh, in these three levels pushing for the government to do what we need to do it uh, civil society been active more than uh, w uh, what is now social media should be um, you know just like a book very active uh, i think we can uh, push for human rights or uh, in particular women rights uh, my recommendation but i need to say to musa i like what you have said and i need to tell you uh, tell you that uh, education is not only the hope i think we are looking for awarenesses we need for women to be aware with their rights and then they can do uh, they can uh, they can make or they can build the education they want this is uh, i'm in a paulo freire school and this is what we need in africa because the systematic education or the education we have gotten from outside is not fit with our culture and with our uh, different ethnicities why not working in awarenesses and then everything can uh, be collected as a uh, education and for aware people and group uh, for my uh, for the government the, i'm going to return to recommendation for the government i wish for the government and i will try my hard with my other uh, you know colleagues to sign for the international uh, agreements as i said before uh, cedaw muboto and everything else change edit and eliminate laws against women in sudan and there are so many by the way uh, girls <laughs> or i can say i <laughs> said because mr shahid is here we we've been beaten on the street because what we are wearing we can't take our children out of Sudan and we can't travel with them because we they saw they see that we are not illegal uh, illegal unless the father should sign for us okay it, no there is no uh, father the uncle the brother of the father can uh, should sign for us so this is I think underestimating for our rights we are the mother we are the origin of life uh, this is why I'm saying here, change, edit, and eliminate laws against women in Sudan law. Gives women uh, uh, the rights in political participation and nominate them for decision-making positions. And this is not only what we need. Women should be uh, nominated and be in uh, decision-making places and have the control over resource because we, because now even if i am a, a, a ministerial or even in a, in a decision making um, place i'm not i i i, I don't have uh, the control over resource and this is very bad okay government through media channels like television national television and national uh, radios should raise awarenesses and change attitude and behavior again against women as well my dears we all know that the society or the social civil so social is a strong uh, partnership for the government and it's the bridge between the communities and the government this is why must activate uh, media put uh, media should uh, put gender as priority to advocate for restructuring their messages for community uh, reaching rural areas in a different places uh, NGOs and CBOs should restructure their mission and vision to work in advocacy for gender, and they should work in harmony and not competitive competition. Yani, because uh, uh, in my observation, uh, what we have here in NGOs and CBOs, not all of them, uh, I can't say all of them, but 
I think they are working in a competitiveness more than in a harmony. But if we clear the goal, if we uh, make the goal clear, we can see that uh, raising awareness and developing our people is more important uh, than our own benefits. Raising awareness through workshops and uh, seminars nominating girls and women for a scholarship so they've been uh, they should be supportive as well i am telling ngos and cbos to work with the sustainable development goals goal number one no poverty goal number three good health quality education goal gender equal uh, five gender equality goal number six clean water and sanitation goal number 16 peace and justice this does not mean that the other girl uh, goals less the, the, in their importance, but this is the goal highlighting, you know, the importance. About um, under, you know, the civil society as well, I'm mentioning political parties. And here we have in Sudan political parties with a lot of women, but the agenda of women or our agenda of gender is not the priority of, uh, of, the, of the parties. This is why we are not seeing women in the position of decision making we always see men 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 and men and as i can see wafa laughing because this is as sudanese activists what we feel betterness you know because the betterness is uh they say that there is no uh, uh skilled women sudanese women and that is not right we are so uh, you know, we are uh, more skilled and we have, uh, you know, the habit of being leading and everything. Now in America, the people immigrate during the dictatorship. Most of the women there been in a Myers uh, position and in a very high rank uh, political position. This is mean as Sudanese women, we can, Sudanese African women, we can uh, lead and we can uh, be in a control uh, place. In a, uh, in a global, I think in a global, uh, through the social media, we can push for our agenda and we can advocate uh, for a gender agenda uh, by increasing number of campaigns regarding gender rights, promotes for women's stories around, uh, you know, uh, around the globe to encourage a strong position and new success creates global platform for advocacy, training, and solidarity. But as well, I heard a uh, very new in for my ears, um, uh, justice uh, of uh, our technique technology justice we need to promote for technology justice because here in capital we have the internet we i can uh, enter to any course i can wish for on any title of a book but what about rural area what about camps what about women in conflict area can we do this for them this is why we should promote as a global uh, community for uh, justice technological justice should reach everyone in everywhere in this planet. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. You're calling for justice in many different uh, aspects. And just I want to ask you, uh, do you think a Sudanese ladies is capable to be uh, in the system of the government there is any women representative uh, in this uh, uh, sector? Actually, uh, before uh, in a peace uh, file, in the peace file before, uh, like uh, one year ago, um, we've been asking as a woman, why, where is the re uh, women representing in this file? A very important file because you know the war is started by men and ended uh, by women. What is the men, uh, women? Uh, one of them told me uh, in my face that there is no many skilled women in Sudan. So can we put them for this uh, very important file, you know? Yeah. And I just laughed in, the, in his face and I just went out. So we campaigned on a, as a women and we put something called Haggana Kamil Ma Bin Jamil. That is all our rights and we are not left lead uh, or we are not left it behind 
you yeah. know, we are not bargaining and we are not left behind. This yeah. group of women uh, had a lot of skilled women who compete this group of men in politician by nominating 22 uh, ministry uh, for the ministries, 22 women in the list. I can share it with you, telling that men, uh, women are skilled and for each ministry, they nominated two and three, not less than two. That's capable with CV, skilled and strong CV. This is just to let them know that we are here. But even after that, what happened with that government that give us 15%, okay? While our, uh, you know, constitution said that we should be presented and participated by 40% as a women. And okay. now in the government, we are just 50%, 15, sorry, one, five, 15%. 15%. Okay, and you mentioned uh, many agreements before it's uh, signed in Sudan, like uh, Juba agreement, and you mentioned like yes. two, three agreements. Uh, is the woman has, um, uh, they share this, or is the woman involved in this kind of agreement in Juba? Mm -hmm. Is there any voice for those Sudanese women in this agreement? Okay. Uh, actually, actually uh, Sudan in his present history, went through three, uh, more than three, but I'm going to mention three, Mashakos in, uh, in 2002, and uh, it is peace agreement between the government and the uh, armed, uh, armed movement called the SPLM, okay? And uh, this uh, was only the government and the movement without present for even single women. The, the government, the last government prohibit the women from participation. Then 2005, the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, and this agreement, women pushed to be participated, and uh, international, uh, you know, community as well pushed. So they went there and they brought what it said al quota, 25% for women to participate in political in Sudan. But now, after 2020 in Juba, women fought for 50%, but they had been given 40, only 40%, 40 okay, in uh, all hierarchy of government in Sudan. As the, as the social activist, uh, Sister Iman, how you can empower the women in your, uh, in your community? How you can empower them? I can see, because I am trainer and I went for uh, like uh, 12 uh, cities in Sudan or Al-Wilayat, uh, states, 12 states in Sudan, I've been trained there, and I can see uh, the hope for Sudan or Africa, okay, is through the raising awareness. Development of Africa is not about services, it's about raising awareness. So when the people being aware, they can fall for their rights and they can build their services by themselves. Yes, if the women know their rights, they can help yes. themselves. Yes. yes, thank you, Iman, that it's very enlightening. I was just holding you for the last moment that you know that we can hear you at the end and uh, after hearing all of this. But we have left one, the Saswan Musa, that if she is here, that we can hear her. She is, I think, development planner. And she can suggest us how to plan for the development and how she sees the, this kind of scenario, especially in this crisis. Sausan Musa. If she can hear, then please. Hello? Yeah, Sausan. Yeah, please. OK. Uh, hi for everybody. And happy International Women's Day. Happy to you. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, Sosen, please. Okay. Yeah, the electricity is cutting because uh, the very <laughs> the okay. is very dark in here. 
It's okay. We can hear you, boys. We see that we enjoy the darkness with you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, happy International Women Day for all to you, and thank you, uh, Mr. Shahid, to giving us this opportunity uh, to share our uh, our experience or our problem, our, our uh, challenge that facing us in Sudan. Uh, can you remind me? The <laughs> uh, question, Dr. Shahid. Yes. I'm as you to... as you are a development planner and you understand the whole scenario and you keep doing planning for the development and other things, how do you see this challenge uh, as a uh, as a crisis or is there any hope to uh, recover out of it? or still we have to struggle and find our own way. So uh, can you put the highlight on those issues that how you think uh, being in Sudan and struggling with this kind of situation? Yes, like uh, my colleague, she said about the situation in Sudan after COVID or after uh, the revolution. And the COVID is come and put that uh, for the very critical position because they, they, they affected for the uh, economic situation for Sudan and the income donation for women, because all the women in Sudan are more than 80% for women, they working in informal sector. And they already uh, just working for the income generating. Uh, with the COVID, all the thing is, uh, is COVID, they, or they lose uh, all the, they, they, the job or the, the income then generation, generating for their family. Uh, now we are back uh, to, to, to support the, the small women with the alliance and with the small organization, uh, supporting with the transitional government uh, to support the, uh, the, 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 the poverty women in different uh, states in Sudan. Here in Khartoum, uh, it is very difficult to to cover all the family or all the women uh, that affected uh, by the COVID-19. But we are trying with the uh, uh, NGOs, uh, international NGOs already working. We are connected with them to support the women uh, and to bring them uh, to the to the to the to support them to, to, to get uh, uh, new opportunities for the income generating uh, with the small business. Uh, that is our plan and we're working for, 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 for that. Uh, the, the, the other uh, thing we are working with them uh, is the awareness about the, uh, the vaccination of COVID-19 because uh, we here, we, we, we have a locking of information. Uh, now, uh, the Sudan is going to, to make the, the, the injection of the, of the uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, for all the family and we're working to make a survey for the uh, old women uh, to support them and to give them the injection for the vaccination. Uh, we have also uh, women in the conflict zone, uh, and also we have women in the uh, IDB camp. Uh, we are working uh, to, to cover them uh, about the, this uh, small uh, business, but the, the, the the opportunities of a small business is not uh, cover all the women uh, in every IDB scam. So we have a very uh, uh, big problem in how we can cover all this effect that COVID-19 is making for the women in Sudan. Uh, with another side, uh, we have uh, many problems because uh, we are make with the, with, the, with, this, with this revolution to get an unequal participation in the, uh, in the government 
and the decision making. Now we have uh, 40 percent for participate, but to now we just uh, take uh, 80 percent. So now uh, we are going uh, to, to support women to participate in the uh, government, uh, and we working for that. We make uh, a big alliance for women from the different uh, women in Sudan. Uh, we make alliance for the women that are coming from the conflict zone, that women, they are working in political, uh, that women from the uh, resistance committee, that women from the uh, um, from the different type of women, we working together uh, to support each other to get uh, to get our opportunities from the government because they are now uh, unequal uh, for the women particip participation in the traditional traditional government so we were working very hard to get our chance but uh, we facing many many challenges because uh, all the women they need uh, they not in in the one uh, vision uh, and they eliminated from the, their, uh, their 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 hobbies. So uh, we are working to, to get our uh, right, uh, but we have uh, here uh, uh, a male operator or protesting. A super I don't know how I can translate this uh, this word but we're facing many problems here in Sudan because the male or uh, have a right for the, had a big right for the, for the women. And the women, they didn't have a, 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 hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, the women, they did, yes, they didn't have a, uh, um, they didn't have right I don't know. So we're working to, to take our rights uh, by the pushing the government to give us uh, our 40%. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, so we got your uh, point. So again, I will try Miss Lillian, but she had the trouble with the sound as a policy expert. We can try once more that if she is okay with the sound, so she can put her lights on those issues that what we have discussed with the perspective of different stakeholders. Ms. Lillian, uh, can you hear us? Ms. Lillian, can you hear us? I think... Still... Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, now it's better. Yeah. Can you all hear me, please? Yes, yes, we can hear you finally. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, I just wanted to hear from you because... Yeah, I won't we... speak for long. Thank you, because 5.30. So... So, as a policy expert, how do you see all the issues? So, basically, I'll go straight to the point. But I'll start with this. My organization is... Wow. My, my, my organization put out a call for policy fellowship. And this is the first ever policy think tank in Nigeria. And we realized that after screening, we had more of male application than female application. Now these male, everyone that applied gets to pay. So the next quarter, we have to put out more call for females only. And guess what? We made it free that the women should come in and be trained as policy leaders. We had much percentage number of 
women applying to be trained as policy leaders. Now, where am I going to? The government has a role to play in ensuring that the female gender is duly in governance. We have lesser number of representatives compared to what the constitution stated. And this is not good. So that is why we set up our policy think tank to train female leaders. Some of the policies, some of these policies to address female inclusion in, in governance, like the gender equality policy. And you know, we noticed that some of these policies actually are not being implemented. They've been signed into law, but the citizens are not aware of this. And that's why women inclusion in politics, in good governance and democracy advocacy is a two-way thing from the side of the government and from the side of the citizens. The citizens need to be educated like every other speaker has said. Education is very important, not just on you need to be involved. If you decide to exclude yourself from what's happening in the policy space or <laughs> like this, the male gender, or then the leaders at the end of affairs would create policies that does not favor the female gender. In Nigeria, like one of the speakers said, some of the things the girl child, especially from the northern region, they are scared of going to school. Not just that they're scared of going to school, but the high rate of kidnapping, banditry attacks in schools, in the northern region. is alarming and yes, the COVID-19 pandemic affected women a lot. It brought about increase in domestic violence and so on. The government who brought up during the pandemic lockdown. Some of these things didn't actually get to the women. And most women I think the connection goes back with Lillian. So sorry, my network. No, it's but okay. Let me let me let me wrap up yes, please. with this. Let me wrap up with yes, this. Please. The women, aside from education, awareness, and advocacy, there is need for the in policy making, politics, because the, and we get to future female leaders that are coming behind. Because if we are not there, then what if And that, and also the government to needs to. Sit up. Miss Lillian, I think those policies is, have been. There is a lots of disturbance. We are not able to hear you. Made to favor to be implemented. It's not just make policy. And this really? advocacy should be taken to schools. Yes. Barely to hear you. More. We cannot understand what you're saying, Sister Lilian. Uh, there is a princess to join us. Good evening, Miss Princess. Good, good evening, Miss Oli Ami. Yeah. Princess. We, we, we want to Ola hear you. Yami. Yeah, Oli Yami. Yeah. Olayami. Yeah. Princess Olayemi. 
<laughs> yes, I mean everyone. Yeah. And um, uh, from the topic, Sorry uh, for which uh, we have, which is post-pandemic realizing. Hello. We can you hear me? We couldn't pronounce your uh, your name. Yeah, we can hear you well. Yes, please. You can continue. Yes, but maybe you should just stick to the princess. You should just stick to the princess. Okay. Princess. Princess. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, and um, I like to. I understand um, Lillian's um, Miss Lillian's point of view as coming from uh, youthful uh, zeal for change to happen as quickly as um, she wants it. We have been. Uh, in the in the um, in the race of getting women to uh, to the front line of um, of uh, a lot of things in Nigeria, and uh, so we I understand her zeal, and I know that with time she will realize that it's um, it will take a little more than that. The uh, women's rights in the post pandemic is something that is so wide because the rights of women during the pandemic in, uh, during the pandemic was seriously infringed on uh, women make in Nigeria here women make the uh, make uh, let's say seventy percent of the workforce of the media workforce. And the connection that the in building, be it in selling petty, be it in petty trading, be it uh, in the market. Uh, why? Can you hear me now? Yeah, but the connection got bad. Let me Sorry, I'm having to use my phone. I've been busy only. Oh, okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you well now. Yes, please continue. Okay. Uh, I think it's the angle in which I position the phone. Yeah. The, what we have were, were women who are mostly the breadwinners of their family, who, women who are uh, trading, petty trading, having to go out of market, having, having to stop being able to provide what they would normally do for their children during the pandemic. And so, um, uh, the post-pandemic um, matter came up with them having spent all their resources on on surviving the pandemic, have no having no money to start to start their petty trading, and then having to resort to other means to be able to get back their capital, which is most times not le not more than five thousand naira. So when you when we are talking that, about women's rights and how to realize it. We must understand that women must be a bit proactive in ways in which they can be on their feet. They have to be able to renew, refresh and maintain the, the home front. And then when you are saddled with such responsibilities, you, you, you don't really know where to start. With her, I've had with my NGO, I've had to um, interact with women, which we had, to, who we had to re, uh, give new capital to, because during the pandemic, their capital had been exhausted in keeping the home front. Yes, and it, so many things within the pandemic started uh, for women who could not assess a lot of things. Even healthcare was non-existent. So we in the NGO have, this, in my NGO have decided that we need to train women on being able to give the, small, the minimum of um, uh, first aid to any ailment that comes up, either be it either through HAPS or being able to assess somebody who will come in to check on them from time to time health-wise. We have also realized that there, there's a lot of trauma because when a woman cannot uh, feed her family and also be able to get means to feed her family, it becomes a traumatic experience. So we have had to deal with health issues 
on and uh, where we had had to call in uh, psychologists to uh, evaluate what the what the effect of of the uh, pandemic had on them and so the findings were that because of the inability of a mother to be able to cater for her family it um she uh, the the trauma went in deep and so like um for me realizing uh, the right of women during the post pandemic has to we must be able to be, uh, we must be able to get them to be on their feet not everyone is educated and even the educated ones are having difficulty in understanding some of the things we are trying to put across to them on how to be able to harness their strength to make it work for them and and um, uh, downplay on their weaknesses, which is not being able to arrange that or uh, arrange for their family. I know that um, some women we've been able to speak with them and we've been able to put them through some kind of trauma uh, counseling, and they've been able to pull through on the on on that. It is only when we have been able to build self confidence and uh, the, and um, in, in themselves and the fact that they can, as much as possible, achieve what they can within their small enclave. That is the only when we can then start to push on a certain uh, amount of rights that they have. Because a, 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 a someone who is not confident in herself cannot really demand for his or her, her rights in within the environment within the system. And women have uh, had to deal with that a lot. I am primarily, I am an engineer, but I, I, I do, I farm a lot. And with the farm, we've been able to employ quite a number of women who work based on, on um, uh, profit sharing, where you work with 100 chickens and you're entitled to 15. Even if you cannot, you just offer services for for the birdhouse and you are entitled to 15 of the 100. And so that gives them, of an, as a woman, once she is financially boy, financially stable, you see the woman coming out strong in whatever it is. So for us to realize our rights as women, we must concentrate on being financially stable, which is what we have come to realize within the NGO, that um, financially stable, women have more confidence in demanding for their rights. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, women and girls, uh, Sister Princess, women and girls, they- say, Yes, sorry, I'm just, um, <laughs> I'm just uh, concentrating on the women because I just started, okay, I know that I should, okay, sorry, next time I'll add the girls, no, it's okay. women and girls. Yes, yes okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Women, women and girls, they're sharing the recovery from COVID-19, from COVID-19 pandemic. What yes. do you think? What do you think? Please repeat your question. I said, I said I women, women, that question. And girls, women and girls, they are sharing the recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. What do you think? They what? They're uh, sharing the recovery. Know. The from recovery. The recovery, yeah. Girls, women and girls, they're sharing the recovery of uh, from uh, COVID-19 pandemic. What do you think? Yes, it's slow. The recovery um, uh, index is slow for women because they have more uh, they have more responsibilities actually in the home front. So I'm, I, I didn't quite hear that word you use. Maybe if you write it, I can yeah. probably answer you properly. I'm not. I just on. I just heard women and girls recovery. What is the what? woman? The, the woman and girl. The woman and girl have a role. In the recovery yes, they, uh, from yes. the COVID pandemic, they have a role. Yes, they do have a role. Yeah, because what do you if 
the role for women and girls in the recovery is quite vast because okay. yeah, the most the most place that was hit during the pandemic is the home front and once the home is not uh, settled there is every aspect of society actually has uh, um, is um, is worst hit because it's from the home the men we come out from is from the home the girls and the, the responsibility is more on the girls, the women and girls, because the mother and the girls are are, is, are demanded of to keep it. You know, when your mother, you, you have a mother that is struggling to keep it, keep the home front. You have her sending more, the girls on errands more, which put them in difficult situations, which is um, more likely not to be able to help them. So like I said, when the girl, the women and girls are in a financially stable position, they are able to, their role during the pandemic is able to be more realized because in the, in the pandemic issue and the post-pandemic issue right now that we are having to deal with, we have uh, more men, women and girls being homeless, being divorced, being battered. And so we need to work on that. But like I said, once the confidence of a woman is uh, built, she's like a, a lioness in taking care of her, of her, uh, of her head, of her uh, family. So once we are able to remove that thing for us of women not being able to, not being able to be financially respons uh, uh, strong, you you have a lot of issues putting up. So like for me. Uh, the role of women is very vast. First, we have to rebuild everything for women and girls. We have to remove, rebuild everything. We have to nurture. We have to uh, help in in a lot of activities around the home and the offices that are okay. picking up right now. As, as a lady, as a woman working in the humanitarian field, uh, what how you can empower women after the pandemic, especially the women, uh, especially the women, the, the family depending on them in the food, take care of the kids, uh, yeah, and the women, they cannot afford the food for the kids. Yeah. How you that can was what I said. The woman we can empower place. through uh, many... Sarah and uh, Southern and Faith in Uganda, from Uganda. Same question to you. Okay, go okay, ahead. I, uh, okay, I, for us, we've been able to empower women through uh, labor, for food, a bit of labor for food and comfortability. Uh, if you if you manage, if you're able to manage within uh, within the farm um, uh, an acre where you grow uh, tomato or you grow uh, corn, we are able to give fifteen percent of whatever it is that come out. So that so that because we have to borrow to maintain the farm. So we have, um, like I said, if you take care of 100 chickens, you, you, you are entitled to two meals, uh, two meals a day. And, um, and, and you are also entitled to share, uh, have 15% of it, which is 15 chickens. And so that motivates them because the, uh, the women I know are very hardworking. And so they get that. And the women that cannot really work in the farm, Within the, um, we, uh, we give them soft loans where they go back to their petty trading and then repay over time. But what we do is that we don't actually take back the money, but we tell them that for them to be responsible, they have to be able to pay back. So once they pay back the money, we reinvest the money back as grants into their business. But you have to show that you can keep yourself, you can, you can make returns and then have them uh, re be able to reuse um, the money that was given to you. And so that, that makes you more bankable and yeah. uh, it helps you in the long run. So by the time you are able to return the money that was given as soft loan to start your petty trading, we give it back to you as grant for being for a well, uh, for a good job. But although we do train them on financial training and uh, the financial business finance training, and um, we train them too on how to manage their businesses. Yeah, it's a good way, you know, to train them and support them financially yes. in their own business. Yes. It's a good way. Mm. Uh, Faith, 
how you can empower women in your community after this pandemic to 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 be sustainable or to be strong financially and how you can how for them can support the family for the food and for the daily expenses the daily uh, livelihood Basically, in Uganda or any other country within Africa, we have a majority of women are doing farming. So many of these women are able to, to, to do farming and sell this food from the market. But uh, we are lacking the aspect of uh, innovation, value addition to food. So uh, I'm wishing that in future, the stakeholders, that is the government, international NGOs, local NGOs and companies should innovate ideas that will help the women to add value to their food so that they will be able to sell it at a much better price. Secondly, the class of women who are working. I mean, having a job is good, but the most important thing is having many sources of income. If they could be able to invest this money, either put a saving in an account or invest it and invest the money in different companies. So the money, if once the money has been earned. The best thing to do is to ensure that this money adds money. And then we, women who are unemployed in Uganda, I'm requesting you to own companies, networking with people who have already achieved because you cannot achieve it alone unless if you join Yeah, the connection I don't think is good. Let us save the time. Hello. Sorry, my yeah. network is not good. Yeah, it's okay. No, no, we all suffering from this, don't worry. Yes, please continue. Hello. Yeah, let us go to Matabu. Matabu as a professional lady and uh, woman, and also as a uh, social activist, and also she's a businesswoman. How Matabu can empowering women in those photo? Matabu, you can hear me? Matabu. Matabu, can, can you hear me? Sarah. I'm with you. Okay. Sarah, after the pandemic, women go through many difficulties. Yes. How, as a, as, a, as a social activist, how you can empower women? Do you think a small micro medium enterprise is a good fast way for women to 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 improve their situation financially? Yeah, okay. Let me say this first. I, going by my experience, the little experience I have, first of all, it's knowing their person, even if you're willing to um, empower them for sustainability sake. You know, temporarily, one can be employed, just like uh, Princess has said, that uh, they employ women to work. Some persons may just work temporarily to get whatever they need to and for their family. But knowing their passion is very, very important and key because uh, if you know what they can do, it's a simple thing, you ask them the question, what do you think you can do? So we can empower you. Some will just tell you they're very good at making hair. Probably they may have two or three passion, but when you weigh them, some may tell you they know how to make hair, 
then they can actually sell in the shop. So you just have to wait to know what they can do better. If it's hair making, if you invest in that for them, if you, if you invest in that, you find out that they will give their all to you and it will actually take a very long time. Uh, then again, uh, you know, just like we say, if we can harness uh, our awareness program, you know, talking with women, hello, can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you need to support, uh, there needs to be a support of the adoption and effective implementation of laws, policies, and programs to respect and protect the women and protect women's rights. Yes, we, we may be willing to employ a woman, but without support, it's going to really be a problem. You can't employ a woman who's, you can't employ or empower a woman whose husband has not approved of it. Because we here in Africa, especially in Nigeria, any woman who goes beyond what her husband has stated, she may be looked at and seen as a woman who is being disrespectful and we think about the decade of marriage. So there's a need for both genders to unless uh, 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 you know, our interest. There's a need to bring the men into it, first of all. The men need to be interested. There's need for an awareness, not to the women alone, but to the men, to let them know that the woman is a... Um, the woman is a helper and must not be undermined, but must all as in her capacity as a woman must not be undermined. So that is in one way, uh, that will in one way help because without support, there's nothing we can do. For example, we have uh, the uh, president, the current president of the World Trade Organization, Ngozi Okunje Uwela. Without support, I don't think she would have gotten to that part. Support from family, support from society, support from the country. So if we cannot get people to support, um, if the woman is not supported, I think there's nothing she can achieve, no matter how we push for um, a liberation, no matter how we push, there's nothing that can actually come to Because whatever we need is uh, positivity. We need the positive news about... Uh, improving and encouraging the woman to do better. Then because the socioeconomic uh, impact of COVID-19 is really severe. And uh, knowing, just like I said, first of all, knowing her passion, then uh, the support from family will go a long way. Then the small businesses, first of all, the SME, small, uh, uh, medium, uh, enterprise like will actually go a long way you know just like uh that's already been said apart from having any job because there are women who already have jobs while there are other women who are yet to have or who are yet to put their hands on anything for those who already have jobs and it would not it wouldn't be a bad thing if they can go into businesses and for those who don't have it also wouldn't be a bad thing. It wouldn't be, it would, it would actually be an encouraging thing to see that the woman is supported, the woman is moved. Because the pandemic, uh, going by what has happened during the pandemic, a lot of women suffered hardship and a lot of women suffered hardship, hunger. And uh, now is the time for the push for us to see that things get better and things work better. Uh, I also uh, remember, um, I think how Ms. Sawa also spoke about advocacy, because if we are able to advocate about uh, empowering women, I think even individuals apart from organizations, because most time, like in Nigeria, you know, most times people push blame, people want to push the government to do a lot of, the government cannot be everywhere at the same time. And even if the government intends to do anything, they, it will actually take time. Lately, uh, to an extent, the Ministry of Women Affairs have supported use of networking opportunities 
mentoring, training for leadership and advocacy to help raise the number of women in the participation of in, and to help raise the participation of women in politics, in businesses, and many other things, just to encourage them and to make them positive about life and to also encourage them to know that they themselves can do extraordinary without any limitation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. It was a good uh, last concluding note. Uh, before we run out of time, just we just want to have one by one that last uh, concluding note from each and every one that I'll just request uh, Musa that she can put her this, I think that due to this connect, uh, low connectivity, she has left. Anyway, she will be back. Then we can ask for the concluding note to her. In the meanwhile, that I'll ask Iman. Iman, that you have spoken about your activism, the role of women in the revolution and other things. So I just want to have your last concluding note before we leave uh, here. So uh, soon after that, then we'll just go to Faith so she can put her last concluding note and we can just wrap it up. Thank you, Ms. Dr. Shahid, and thanks for all, the, all uh, our colleagues. Uh, what I have observed in the, the COVID-19 that women in rural area been producing, uh, you know, in rural area, the system is not like in capitals and, uh, and capital estates because uh, women are more productive working in farms and building houses and everything. So the trading was easy. So uh, they adapt to the lockdown more than women in the, the capital. And that is very strange and challenging for the, you know, capitalism itself. Uh, women in uh, that rural area, been, uh, they could trade uh, things with each others and uh, the life uh, with the, they adapt to life in uh, the lockdown but uh, what happened in sudan in capital khartoum here and the capital of states the other states that women uh, been from poor to underline of poverty and that was crucial because uh, uh, Kids were in malnutrition and women themselves uh, beaten and uh, for domestic, uh, you know, violence and everything. Uh, as well, I, I heard the, the, the colleagues and I want to tell them that uh, even we empowered women with economics and we give them budget and everything. Are they going to keep it for themselves so they can empower themselves and their kids and families? Uh, I think they're going to share with the men and the men going to see the other women and marry another woman. Uh, in my region in Sudan, uh, women are farming very, you know, uh, large farms and, uh, uh, and they, uh, again, uh, a lot, you know, a lot is uh, <laughs> yani, not that uh, much of money, but at least it can... Uh, uh, keep them for uh, one year till the other rainy season. But unfortunately, uh, the women gave willingly the money to the man or the <laughs> women giving them to the men and men just go and uh, bring some other young women so can cultivate more land. Understand what I'm saying here. This is why I'm returning to say again, we need to raise awarenesses for women and then we can empower them with economy uh, as well i i have noticed that uh, um, give me a fish or learn me how to fish this is what we can uh, need to understand uh, at least if we have you know always uh, we think about giving 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 out taking 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 this will not reach us you know, it will not uh, take us to any place and we cannot reach the goal. Uh, I can understand because, uh, you know, the, the situation is very critical. I can give, but with the giving, I can, uh, uh, I can uh, 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 do more awareness and raising awareness. This is in the case of uh, Sarah. I don't know if uh, you are hearing me. 
uh, you are doing very good job and it is big and huge but are we going to 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 just uh, doing this as usual are we going just to give them the fish or is better to give them the fish and learn them learn them how to fish thank you thank you iman it's a very good point and valid point to just for the sustainable ecosystem to create a sustainable ecosystem that will help us to move further with the more confidence and all so i'll just take uh, faith for her last uh, note as a concluding remarks please go ahead yes please thank you very much in the team of asmp for giving us this uh, opportunity and your partners for us to express our views regarding the effects of the epidemic in vis-a-vis -vis the women's rights However, maybe for the way forward, I would request your team and your partners to have at least a project. They start to support women like the rest of the team that are in this platform so that they will be able to, to either fund their NGOs or fund their company. And then we can do a documentary. So the next thing, coming in International Women's Day, we will be able to share our documentary to other women or to other countries, how we have impacted lives. Then possibly in future, our stories can change the lives of other people. We just don't want to talk in this platform, but we want to impact the number of lives. There are many people out there who have degrees, but they don't know how to use the degree they have got like IT experts, you can do much with information technology. There is new innovations that are upcoming. Women will be able to document their stories and share. Even journalists, there is a lot you can do with a journalism course. Some women out there and men can be able to create their own communications company and share their stories to the world and sell out their ideas to media companies. Even as lawyers, lawyers can, there are different things we can do with the, the legal knowledge. There are many lawyers, even in Uganda here, there are many lawyers who are unemployed, but they have degrees, but the only problem, they don't know how to utilize the knowledge they learned from the university. Because in the university in Africa, many people think it, it is only through seeking employment that you can, you can get a, to earn a living. But there are many opportunities we can utilize. You can create your own law firm and be able to employ yourself and impact other lives. You, because currently for me, where I am working in my law firm, I'm having many clients um, in training youth to be able to on pro bono basis, free legal service to young people. I train them on company registration, company procedures, how to run a company. There's lately a young, young, a young man that I identified. I opened for, he's called Mr. Noah. I opened for him a company for IHR communications. They deal in media. I trained him how to run a media company. And this young man is still a student, a university student of two second year. But he's an achiever, he's employing about 20 people now in his company. The young man is able to represent United Nations in climate change, he's reporting to TV stations, he's doing a documentary for the government, the current ruling government in Uganda, NRM, he's helping ministers to document their stories in their meetings. He has really achieved much within the six months that he registered his company. Another person that I identified was a young student. He was in his fourth year in architecture. I registered him his company. As we speak now, he's a great achiever. The young boy is in just a fourth year student, but he's able to employ about 200 people. So it's not about the degree that we are carrying or the, the achievements we can make with the partners, but as an individual, we can impact lives. Even at a rural level, there is a person I met in my community and this couple didn't have money to take care of themselves. I told them, you know what? Agriculture is not for poor people. 
you can do agriculture and network with the government, be able to supply government cassava cuttings. And luckily enough, this, this, I registered them a free company, these two farmers. They wow. registered their company for free at my service. And I trained them how to use that company. The two farmers, Mr. Ojangole and his wife, they are able to supply cassava stems to organizations. They are able to supply their stems to government, Ministry of Agriculture. And as I speak now, the, the young couple has, a, has, a, has built a commercial house. They are having their own big farm. They are supplying to markets. So I'm calling out to women out there and men to take up responsibility. If you want to be successful in life, the number of people you impact will, will, will be how we shall measure your success. So I'm calling out to the team in this platform. Since we have learned a lot from our colleagues who have shared their story, I pray that by next year, when we are celebrating International Women's Day, we want to hear your story, how you have impacted lives, how you have changed lives of women and men in your own country. The government alone cannot play a role in protection of human rights. It needs the support of stakeholders like the media, international human rights, individual companies, and the local organizations, that are community-based organizations and national organization. All of us, we will be able to change a community. Even as a family household, everybody has a right to protect the rights of the other person vis-a-vis -vis the opportunities that we have in, in adhering to the laws of the country. So thank you very much. I look forward to having a conversation with you and possibly you can also build our capacity. Some of us, we are not used to cameras. So <laughs> I'm praying that next time you can build our capacity so that we will be able to share good stories that yeah. will impact people's lives. Thank you yeah. very much. We thank you and, and he huge and big and great salute for you, Sister Faith from Uganda. Really, you have amazing, nice talk and you are very powerful, strong woman and should other women learn from you. And you mentioned we can cooperate together and we are in ASMB. We promise to cooperate together to share our project, to share the ideas of good proposal and how we can help women in our communities, especially in Africa. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. I will be able to support you. Hello? Yeah. Keep in touch. Thank you very much. We can link. This is not yes. going to be our last meeting. This platform, ASMB, give us this opportunity to meet, but it's not going to be the last one. Inshallah, we'll keep uh, we'll keep discuss and uh, talk many things to to help our to help the women in our communities and to help the families and to help everyone. And my warm greetings to those couples and thank you instead of them and you give them really good opportunity for good life and happiness. Thank you so much. And really, I, I don't know even how to say it to you. You are very good and very powerful, very strong lady. We have to learn from you. Thank you, okay, Sister. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll communicate with you after this uh, conference, inshallah. I'll communicate with you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Shahib. Yeah. Thank you. Now, the last but not the least, Ibtisam, that your last words. Ibtisam, we cannot hear you. Hello. Yeah. I want to add uh, some point about uh, the situation from rural area. The woman depend on for sector and animal production. It's uh, to depend on or reflect for nomadic and semi-nomadic or sedentary. You know? Yeah, we can hear you. You, should, you should be assessment what happened. This is the main point. About 60, 60 percent depend on sectors. 
for agriculture and animals. What is the plan strategy? You can to cash or how to facing of this challenge. Unfortunately, I will not contact my survey or research for uh, women after pandemic for uh, market, for local market, you know, and how to protect for this woman in rural area. About uh, 25% to feeling about wearing how to can give to food enough. Why? It is a problem. How can you? Any person here you can put here to this place. How can you cast to feeling about this woman? You can help. This is the many reason about uh, how to warm um, confidence between tribe and social and uh, political. Why this woman to loss of this a basic need? It is very it is, yes. You can see how to can put uh, this woman for project. It's very important. And to, he is to get early morning and to how to get for uh, charcoal and firewood and to all the time, you all responsibility on family. After the resolution in Sudan, maybe you can uh, about uh, present it for 40 percent. It is a, a good uh, information, and uh, you must be all working non governments in Sudan or in Africa. You should be to see, go out in your band to go in rural area. You decide for uh, local products, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Fisan. Really, the revolution in Sudan was very unique, and the women is put side by side with men, even the street understands. Uh, the role of the woman and they try the, the Sudan community try to accept the, the the woman being in the street and standing with the man and protesting for their rights there is many things so that revolution is was very unique uh, revolution it give a lesson for all the for the the whole uh, world and we know women have a big role in this revolution and have a big role in the changing the system and and removing the outgoing regime. There is many things uh, women did in Sudan. I think Sudanese women are very inspired and very powerful ladies, and they're capable to do many things. Thank you, Pisam, and we are really thank you for giving us uh, from your time. And thank you, Iman, Abu Damir, thank you, Sara. I'm so happy you're here with us. Uh, Faith, you have a special thank for me and your community and all the people in Uganda. Princess, I'm sorry. Uh, your name, Princess. Yeah, thank you so much, sister. There is one lady, I think, from Ethiopia. Uh, we did not hear your voice, but inshallah, we promise you, we'll hear you. And we'll, we'll meet again. We'll ask Dr. Tahir to give us another opportunity uh, to let us be together in another uh, digital platform to discuss more, more, uh, more issues. And also, there is a proposal uh, phase prepared for us to discuss real project for women in African continent. And right now, this for the coming future, the soon future, inshallah, this will be our topic if Mr. Shahid accepted this. 
face you are the lead you are you will be the one who lead that uh, discussion to see how we can help women in our communities and how how we can help uh, women financially how we can give um, uh, ideas for for uh, projects for new business for op for entrepreneurs uh, how we can help women and we can do many things and we are capable to do the women and thank you so much all of you happy independent happy international sorry happy international women day and we we all together by words we can change the whole world it because we are all together together we can do as iman mentioned one hand cannot clapping but all of us together we can do many things and we can change the world it little bit face i'm so happy seeing you smiling victor tahir yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you so much it was it was not ours day it was women's day so anyway that uh, i was uh, feeling like to uh, like disturbing in in the middle but anyway i was here to help you all okay and to intend the equality dr sahib we need you we need you here no no it, it was just a uh, fun part but i really appreciate that to see and i'm very much hopeful that how you people are taking it up i think that you are not less than anybody else and i know iman in the last uh, discussion i still remember that how she explained and the thing that i don't have to explain more than it and we all know that how the things even the sara and faith these are the very very you know bright uh, young ladies that who can really shape the nations and even a small effort is very very important it's not about the changing whole country alone or something even you are thinking with a small spark that is enough to create uh, another you know chain into that so i believe that you know what we are talking about here maybe we are just uh, uh, thinking uh, in a different way and for others we are just uh, doing a bit of discussion but it's not a discussion it's about creating and connecting each other you know that once we are connected globally it's more important to connect and share our thoughts how we can help each other uh, on especially in this time of crisis it's not about the boundaries it's not about the nation or geography it's about the humanity you know all the humans of different races and religions they all are same it's only the political agenda and the uh, this discrimination that keeps apart you know uh, all us uh, to be apart from each other so this is necessary that in the age of social media we think positive bring everybody you know together think and bring the positive vibes around the society and all and with this hope i really am very happy and it's going to be here in the midnight in india it's going to be almost 11 o'clock at night and we we are concluding the women's day on this platform you know with the hope of having a new day tomorrow with a new hope thank you so much uh, once again Shahid, let me just because here my community the arabic language is the main language and all the people they don't know, most of them they doesn't know exactly what's going on I, uh, i'm just uh, taking permission from all of you guys just to say this in arabic if you don't mind yeah ana bashkur kull al nisa sudaniyat tahiya lehum ala min min asmd sudan an iwit organization bin hayyikum bi yawm al mar al alami yani lakum hayya jamila hayya muwaffaqa insha allah wa munazzamat iwit and jamiyat asmd al hiya جميع محترفي وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي تعمل من اجل المراه ومن الشباب والفتاه والشاب الافريقي والشباب والشباب الافارقه عامه بنشكركم جميعا ونحن بنعتذر لانه ما كان في ترجمه بالعربي وي وي ار سو سوري ذير از نو انتربريتر فور اربيك لانجويج اند اولسو وي هاف سايل لانجويج وي سوري فور ذا ديف بيبول ان سودان ان سايد سودان اند اوت سايد سودان sorry there is no sign language translation for you for the people but don't forget i love you so much all the deaf in sudan uh sorry for the deaf community and we love you so much uh, there is interpreter for this interpreter for this but unfortunately she didn't join us and also there is interpreter for arabic language also she didn't uh, join us because of the communication problem thank you all of you shukran nisa biladi اتمنى لكم عام سعيد عام جميل ايمان 
دائما معودانا ليكي دور في المجتمع يا رب تواصلي كل نشاطك وي اولويز جيت يوز ايمان از سوشيال اكتيفست وي اولويز جيف اس يا جيف اس هيلبينج اند اسيستينج وومن ان السودان يا كيب جوينج كيب هيلبينج سودانيز وومن اند ان شاء الله اول اوف اس ويل ورك فور ويمن ان افريكا شكرا لنساء بلادي ان شاء الله عام سعيد جميل عليكم مليء بالحب والسلام آه، نقدر نشتغل ونقدر نعمل عشان نأمن مستقبل أولادنا وأخواننا وكل الأسر uh, We wish this will be a year of uh, peace and love إن شاء الله we love all, we love each other to, to live in peace and in the whole continent, not just in Sudan I love you so much, love you all uh, إن شاء الله we'll work together as I, as I promise you, we'll work together Sarah, Iman, Ibtisam and Princess <laughs> You have a special greeting from here Thank you so much and inshallah we'll meet soon.